Hey there everybody, this is Evan Rogers with your fancy language words teaching you today about the compliment. And this is coming on the tail of the copula video. Compliments require copula to an extent. I don't know about require, but they definitely go hand in hand. Uh, so before I begin though, uh, every single one of the things that I produce is available for $1 a month on Patreon or a subscribe star. So go over there and subscribe your little butts off. It's dang near free, as the Hodge twins would say. All right, let's just go on here. Oh, uh, just so you know what's up on Patreon and Subscribe Store, we have the JLPT N5 kanji, every single kanji you need to know for the JLPT N5, WA versus GA, uh, agglutination worksheets, uh, lots of different practice stuff, and I'm making more every single month, every single week, and I'm putting it up there, okay? Anyway, the compliment, the compliment is, it's kind of an English idea, really. Um, oh, I don't know about English, but definitely it, the compliments are more easily seeable in English than they are in Japanese. Uh, okay, so but but I, it's very useful to understand what a compliment is, so that you will recognize uh, copula in the future. Copula, not compliments. Copula in the future, because sometimes compliments in Japanese are uh, have the copula in them. Like I mentioned in the copula video, e adjectives have uh, the copula in them, and uh, so do uh, so do na adjectives when we have the na there. So kirei nahito is a person who is pretty, things like that. Notice that this has an e complement. It's not a compliment. Like I'm not saying you're cute, even though if I say you're cute that has a compliment in it. And we're going to talk about that, okay? So a compliment is basically, in a copula sentence, we had x equals y. x was the subject, and y was the description. And so, y is the copula. So subject, copula, y is the complement. Okay, I think I just misspoke. y is the complement. We have subject, copula, complement. All right, it's basically the y of x equals y. X is, yeah, just like I just said. So read what I just said. All right, Gwen Stacy is blonde. I think I was watching Spider-Man before I made these example sentences. Gwen Stacy is blonde. Gwen Stacy equals blonde. Thus, blonde is the complement. So blonde is the description of the subject following a copula. Spider-Man is delicious to the lizard. So technically, y equals delicious to the wizard. So that is kind of the copula. But also, I, I definitely delicious is part of the copula. But I mean, is to the lizard part of the copula? I mean, this is really an object of the preposition. Uh, but like, he's delicious, but he's delicious to the lizard. So anyway, whatever. Spider-Man equals delicious to the lizard. Does that make sense? I hope you can see that he the compliment is at least delicious. And possibly we could argue it's delicious to the lizard. Uh, okay, great. That's all. At least the very least, the predicate is is delicious to the lizard. The B verb is is, and Spider-Man is the subject. Andrew Garfield was the best Spider-Man. Notice the compliment here is the best Spider-Man. And also notice we had adjective, adjective, and number one and two. And here we have a noun, the best Spider-Man. Spider-Man itself is a noun, and we're describing Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Not just any Spider-Man, but the best Spider-Man. And past tense. So AG equals the best Spider-Man, past tense. Does that make sense? Was is past tense. So... Andrew Garfield equals past tense Spider-Man, and not just any Spider-Man, the best Spider-Man. So they're kind of like a direct object, but the subject isn't acting upon the compliment. Does that make sense? So if we were to say Gwen Stacy eats potatoes, okay, uh, potato, you see how that is? It's Gwen Stacy eats and then potatoes, right? So like, it follows exact same pattern. It's just that Gwen Stacy is in that sentence. Gwen Stacy would have been acting upon a t potato, right? She would have been grabbing it and shoving them in her mouth. I guess that's what she does. But with blonde and being blonde, there's no action taking place. It's literally just a description, all right? It's just a description of what's going on, of the subject. It's a description of the subject. That's the difference between a compliment and a subject. Um, okay, I think I want to add, let, let, let's add another sentence, okay? I want to add another sentence. Uh, the ugly, I don't know, 
the ugly monster is smelly. All right, great. Uh, so notice uh, the ugly monster. Uh, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a noun phrase, noun phrase, uh, and it's the subject, right? Uh, equals smelly. So if you look at this sentence, you might be tempted to think that the word ugly is a compliment, but that's not, that's not right. This is just a regular old adjective going into a noun and it exists inside of a noun phrase. Monster, the monster, the ugly monster. It's a three word noun phrase making the subject. So you see, the compliments, what it's what comes after the copula, like the word is and things like that, okay? So the ugly monster is just a noun phrase with the making of the subject, and the actual copula, uh, sorry, the actual compliment is smelly, okay? I figured I should make sure that that's understood. In English, this is very true. In Japanese, there's a little bit of not so much. Almost any time you use anything to describe a noun in Japanese, you're actually using um, you're actually using a copula to an extent. It's a very strange idea, but just for now, let's not get into Japanese right now. That's what a compliment is. Have yourself a great day. Peace out. And let's sing Vampirina. We can uh, sing Booty Vampirina. You want to sing Booty Vampirina? What's that? Uh, what's that song? Uh, We're living the scream. Whoa, Bamparina, I came and come zoom. Maybe blue with pointy teeth. Maybe blue with pointy teeth.